what's up there, so first. Today I'm going to show you how you can test and diagnose problems with your throttle position sensor with or without a wiring diagram and by using just this basic multimeter. Alright, before we go any further, I think I need to mention that this testing procedure will only work on mechanically operated throttle plates like this one and that it will not work on electronically controlled throttle plates like we have here. Alright, so next you want to find your throttle position sensor and in our case, uh, it's going to be this guy right here on the other side of our uh, throttle body and then you want to find your connector and the wires. The way your throttle position sensor works is it receives a constant supply of voltage, which in our case is 5 volts, and ground from our, your ECU, and then it alters that voltage based on the position of the throttle plate, and then sends that back as a signal, which is in uh, DC voltage, to your ECU, and then your ECU uses that information along with all the other inputs from your uh, other sensors to do things like uh, just ignition timing, and also adjust your uh, fuel injectors and other components that help your engine run smooth. Alright, so if we're going to be testing our throttle position sensor without a wiring diagram, so we need to figure out which one of these wires does what exactly. So the first thing we want to do is we we'll get in our car and then turn the key to the on position without turning on the engine. This way the ECU will send ground and voltage to the throttle position sensor. Alright, next we'll remove our connector. Next we get our multimeter, turn it on and put our settings on 20 volts DC. Since we don't expect to measure anything above 5 volts, uh, the next one up on the settings scale on our multimeter will do, which in our case is 20. Next we'll ground our black test lead, and then we're going to test each wire for voltage, and the one that gives us 5 volts we're going to write down as our constant voltage supply wire. So here's the first one, nothing, second one, nothing, and last one. There we go, we got 5 volts. So we're going to go to the back of the connector and we're going to write down this wire, which is this uh, white and brown wire, as our constant voltage supply wire. Alright, so next we're going to find our ground wire and we do that by measuring resistance from the two remaining pins to ground. So we get our multimeter, turn our settings back to, ohm, back to ohms, and I'm going to choose this last setting which will not only give us a reading but also sound a beep when we have ground. Okay, next we're going to test the two remaining wires and you want to make sure you don't test the last wire which was our constant wire. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a good idea to test the resistance of a hot wire. You could either damage the wire or your multimeter. Okay, so let's try the first one. Oh, there we go. First try, we got it. So we found our constant ground wire, which is this guy, and our constant voltage supply wire, which is this one. So the middle one has to be our signal wire. All right, so next we're going to check our throttle position sensor for its voltage output. So first we're going to reattach our connector. And then go to our multimeter and put the settings back to 20 volts. Okay, so next we're going to back probe our signal wire and our ground wire. And in my opinion, paper clips will work great for back probing these connectors. Just make sure you get them in all the way and you make good contact. And next I'm going to use these alligator clips attached to my test leads uh, to connect to the back of these wires. So first our signal wire. But before I attach my ground wire, I should say that uh, this car is supposed to have 1 volt at idle coming out of the throttle position sensor and since the key is already in the on position and we have power supplied to this throttle position sensor and the throttle plate is always all the way closed like you would have it at idle we should have one volt here once I attach to this. And there we go and we got 0.95 which is pretty close to one volt. Alright so next we're going to go from closed throttle or idle which is where we are right now to wide open throttle. So I'm going to do this manually, I'm going to do this slowly, and what you want to look for is a steady increase in our voltage reading. You don't want to see it to jump around, you don't want to see it to go down, then up. Uh, you just want to see it go up smoothly and steadily. And then on the way down, you want to see a decrease in the same manner. Alright, here we go. I'll try to go kind of fast, but... Alright, we're at wide open throttle and we got 4.6 volts. So now we're going to go back down and you want to make sure again this goes down steadily. It doesn't jump around and goes down nice and smooth. There, there you have it. Alright, great. So as you saw, a throttle position sensor can supply voltage and as the, volt, as the throttle plate opened, the voltage supply steadily increased and as it closed, the voltage supply is steadily decreased and that's what you want to see from a good throttle position sensor. Alright, now on to the second test which is trying to simulate how the engine is shaking around while the car is running. 
because you could have a throttle position sensor that can supply voltage properly under these circumstances with the engine off, but once you turn on the engine and everything is moving around and rattling around, it might have a problem uh, doing this in a proper, steady, and constant manner. So what we're going to do is try to just assimilate a moving engine by just tapping on this sensor with an end of a, let's say, a screwdriver, and then opening a throttle plate and then closing it. Okay, I'll try to do this a little bit faster so you guys don't get bored. Okay, so we made it back to 4.6. And as I tap on it, it doesn't move. So now we're going to go back down. All right, back to 0.95 and I can't get it to budge either. All right, so our readings were good for this throttle position sensor and I know this throttle position sensor is good since uh, I haven't had a check engine light or any other problems that might indicate a problem with the throttle position sensor. But let's talk about if you get uh, bad voltage readings from your throttle position sensor. All right, so if you don't get good voltage readings from your throttle position sensor, uh, before you replace the throttle position sensor, there's a couple of things you should check. First thing you wanna check is this uh, throttle cable. You wanna make sure it's not binding or is stuck anywhere. Uh, you want to make sure this throttle plate can move freely. There's, it's uh, the shaft that's inside this throttle body is not binding in there. Uh, if it is, you want to spray some WD-40 inside here, and then try to see if that makes a difference. All right, if you get higher than normal readings at idle, you want to make sure that this uh, this screw on the bottom here uh, hasn't been tampered with, because a lot of times people like to increase their idle uh, to try to hide a, maybe a misfire or an engine that's uh, running rough due to a vacuum leak and whatnot, and then your throttle plate is gonna stay open a little bit and I at idle, therefore your voltage reading from your throttle position sensor is gonna be higher naturally, and then you might think you might have a problem with your throttle position sensor. All the while, it was just this screw that was adjusted in a little too much. Also, more important than everything else, you wanna make sure you get this tube off, and then you wanna inspect around your throttle plate inside your throttle body, because carbon buildup, could also sometimes keep your uh, throttle plate open a little bit. It could also um, get in the way of this, uh, the shaft inside here moving freely. It could cause some binding and therefore uh, throw off your uh, voltage output from the, your throttle position sensor. And with that said, I'm gonna wrap this video up. So if you found this testing procedure helpful at all, please give this video a thumbs up. You may also wanna consider checking out some of my other videos, uh, especially the ones where I use this multimeter to test other sensors and other components on my cars. And I'll put some of them on the screen as video links so you can just click on them. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.